Hello learners, uh, welcome to this beautiful session of ours today. I am your instructor, CPA Ringo Frederick. In our class today is a continuation of what you are doing. Recall in our previous class you had introduced the concept of our decision trees. I gave you detailed uh, introduction and foundation of the same. So today I want us to look at a concept of our decision tree where I am dealing with the concept of net present value. Because remember, we are looking at decision trees in financial management. So it will be very important that we also do understand in situations where I am required basically to prepare decision trees in the event that I am having discounted cash flows, how will we go about it? That is what I want us to learn today. And on that note, I want us to use this question. Literally, you can basically download this question for you to have a view of it as we'll be going through it. It's a very interesting question, quite detailed, and it has a lot of concepts which by the time we are done with this class, you'll find that literally, I'm very sure that there's no question that you can't handle when it comes to decision trees and the concept of NPV. So in our question, we are told that Bora Manufacturers Limited it tends to purchase processing machine costing 40 million. So that is the cost of this processing machine. I'm also told that the machine is uh, expected to have an economic life of two years with a salvage value at the end of its useful life. Okay, to adjust for risk on this investment, probabilities have been attached to the expected cash flows over the two year period as shown below. I'm given year one and year two. And in this case, uh, this is the data that I'm given. I'm told that we had, uh, of course, uh, our cash flows, year one probability, year two probability. Additional information, we are told that the cash flow in year two are conditional on cash flow in year one. So in this case, whatever that you are going to earn in year two will basically be determined with what we'll be earning in year one. I'm also told here that the cost of capital is 10%, we are told to ignore depreciation. Then our required, a good examiner here, want us to determine, number one, a decision tree of the investment project. Number two, the best possible net present value NPV of the project and its prof uh, a probability of occurrence. The worst possible NPV of the project and its probability of occurrence. Expected NPV. And you're also supposed to advise the management of Bora Manufacturers Limited on whether the processing machine should be purchased. So this is a very good question because it has covered a lot of uh, concepts that we need to uh, basically understand. And uh, on this case, I want us to correct something here. You see on the probability for 30 million 0 0.6, that is uh, of course uh, year two, it should be 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, and 0 0.1. The last bit should be 0 0.1, not 0 0.3. So let us correct that. should be 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.1. I'm talking of cash flow where I'm having 30 million in year one. The probability is 0 0.6. You see the payoffs, I'm having 20, 25, 30. So the probability should be 0 0.4, 0 0.5, and 0 0.1. So kindly correct that. Kindly correct that should be 0 0.1. Now, given such a question, my good students, whenever I am dealing with the concepts of uh, NPV, at whichever level that you're dealing with, should it be foundation level? Should it be advanced level? So long as it has a concept of NPV, it is important for us to understand that always, whenever I am required to determine our NPV, NPV will always be equal to the present value of cash flows, present value of cash flows, with less our initial outlay, with less our initial outlay. This is always how we can determine our NPV. Now, where the difference will come in is in regard to the present value of our cash flows. It is in regard to the present value of our cash flows, this concept here. So at this point, we should understand that when you are talking of our present value of our cash flows, my good students, anytime you are talking of our present value of your cash flows, this is what you must always tend to have in mind. 
present value of cash flows, it will be determined whether the cash flow is regular or irregular. So let us start with a case whereby my present value of cash flows, where I am dealing with basically uh, talk of uh, we can start with uh, basically irregular cash flows. Okay, irregular cash flows. Irregular cash flows also we can term it as what as lump sum. So when I am dealing with the concept of irregular cash flows or lump sum. For us to determine our discount factor, this is what we must always tend to have. The present value interest factor given the rate a number of years. This one we are going to determine by taking, <coughs> excuse, of course, 1 plus R raised to power negative N. That is what we are going, that's how we are going to determine that factor. In the event that I'm dealing with irregular cash flows. What if in this scenario, my good students, I am dealing with regular cash flows. We should understand that irregular cash flows basically, in this case I'm receiving different sum, different sum over the years, right? See year one maybe I'm receiving 20, year two I'm receiving 10 like that, meaning that our cash flows tend to, to vary, okay? What about when I'm having the concept of regular cash flows? When you're talking of regular cash flows, also referred to as annuity, you will find that in this case, I'll determine our discount factor by taking present value interest factor annuity given the rate a number of years. And on this, we should always remember this formula, 1 minus into 1 plus R raised to power negative n, but this time around, I'm also going to divide by what? By r. So this is a guiding, uh, maybe, information that we should always be having. At any given point, you are dealing with a concept of NPV. At any given point, always, whenever you're dealing with NPV, always have that in mind. That will really, really help you. Okay? <coughs> Excuse so once we have this, we can proceed and look at that question of ours. A good examiner wants us to determine our, want, want us to prepare basically our decision tree, a graphical representation of the data that I'm given, as well as the NPVs. So this is what we are going to do. Let us prepare this decision tree. And on doing this, I'm going to have a question here. We can literally squeeze this question so long as it's visible. We have it there. This is our focus. I want us to prepare basically our decision tree. So on decision tree, remember there are two concepts that we must always tend to remember. The concept of decision alternatives and the concept of state of nature. These will be the building blocks in our decision tree. So on that note, Decision alternative. What can we choose? What do we have control over? And remember we mentioned that it's always going to be represented by that decision node, the square figure, right? So this is what I'm having. I'm having uh, basically we're told like uh, Bora Manufacturers Limited intends to purchase processing machine costing 40 million. So this is to say, my good students, clearly, I'm having Bora, and Bora, they do have this decision of purchasing. So I can, let me squeeze it here. I have this decision of purchasing. Okay? We have a decision of what? We have a decision of purchasing. So on purchasing, in this case, I can either decide to purchase. Or on the other hand, actually, we can do what? We can decide not to purchase. So this is decision alternative, purchase. So if we purchase, how much are we going to spend? If you purchase, we've been told we are going to spend 40 million. That is if we purchase, because the project or that machine will cost us what? 
40 million as per the question, right? The machine is expected to have a, an economic life of two years with a salvage value of the, uh, at, at the end of the useful life. To adjust for risk on the investment, probabilities have been attached to the expected cash flows over the two years period as shown below. <coughs> this is what I'm given, year one, and I'm having the state of nature. So this is what will happen. If I have purchased this machinery, these are, that is of course the decision of purchasing and not to purchase. These are decision alternative, right? So, of course, this one I'm going to spend zero. So, if we purchase, what will happen? In year one, I can either generate these values, I can either generate a specific amount, which is 25 million. Look at that case. I'm having 25 million, and the probability of me generating 25 million is 0 0.4. So, I can generate 25 million here. Probability of us generating 25 million is 0 0.4. Or, we can generate 30 million. Probability of us generating 30 million is 0 0.6. That is what the examiner is telling us. This is year 1. This is year 1. Year 1. This is year one that is what you're having up to that point right that is what you're having up to this point and what were we told in our additional information my good students check it out we are told in note number one that the cash flow in year two are conditional on cash flows in year one so Cash flows in year two will literally depend on what we've earned in year in year one. So what will be the next step here? Check year one. If year one we generated 25 million and that probability was 0 0.4, what will I generate in year two? In year two, we are going to generate the following. That is, I'm going to generate, I can either generate, uh, of course, uh, 12 million. I can either generate uh, 12 million, 16 million, or 22 million. So this is what I'd be having here. So here we are saying we can either generate... 12 million, actually you can have it uh, here, let me just have it here as our payoff. I can either generate 12 million, 16 million, or 22 million. With probability being, with probability here, with pro our probability being 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and 0 0.5. That if year one we had 25 million, that is if year one we had 25 million. The same case, there's a chance that I can also generate this amount in year two. There's a chance that I can, I can generate this amount in year two. Still, remember we are in year two. So basically this is what you have in year two here, okay? So year two, I can also generate this sum. I can as well generate a figure of how much my good students. We can generate based on what we are given there. We can generate either 20 million, 25 million, or 30 million.
with probabilities of what? With probabilities of 0 0.4, with probability here of 0 0.4, 0 0.5. We say this one should be 0 0.1. We correct it, that should be 0 0.1. So that is what I should be having. Okay? So in this case, that is to say, at this point, if we don't purchase, what will happen? If we don't purchase, literally, I'm going to spend none. I'm going to spend zero. So in this case, if I don't invest, of course, what will you be having? I'll be having dash there. I won't be having anything. So that is what I'm having, my good student. That is what you're having here. Now, after that, we have basically prepared our decision tree. Elaborating and going through it just like that. Go to the next question. Remember, if we didn't have the concept of NPV, we could have li literally rolled back to our final decision that we should take. But because I am dealing with the concept of NPV, we must incorporate the NPV first. This is what Molimu is saying. That if it was just the other way, I could have rolled back and see the best option that I could have taken based on my investment. But because I'm dealing with NPV, then we must incorporate the NPV. Look at the next question. Examiner is telling us what? In this case, we are told that the best possible net present value of the project and its probability of occurrence. So what would be the next, or rather the best, NPV? Therefore, at this point, you must now incorporate the concept of NPV. Recall, NPV Mwalimu had mentioned to us that literally we'll be talking of what? The concept of present values and the concept of what? Initial outlay. So therefore, I need to determine our discount factor. And discount factor will depend with the nature of our cash flows. We can clearly see here that our nature is irregular because year one, I'm having 25 million. Year two was dependent in year one and also we had irregular cash flows. So this will bring us to this factor of uh, determining our factor here. Our factor which should be present value interest factor given the rate a number of years where we mentioned that I should be talking of what? 1 plus R raised power negative N. So we start with year 1. What will be your factor in year 1, my good students? Year 1, I'm having 1. Discounting rate is 0 0.1 because it's 10% raised power negative 1. Year 2, what will you be having in year 2? 1 plus 0 0.1 raised power negative 2. So that in this case, what will you be having? In this case, what will you be having? I'm going to pick my calculator. Remember that you can also check it on your table. So I'm having here 1.1 raised to power negative 1, which this one should give me a figure of 0 0.9. So I'm getting a figure of 0 0.9091. The other one I'm getting uh, 1.1 raised for negative 2. This one should give us uh, 0 0.8264. Kindly, guys, you can confirm if we are getting that. You can confirm if you are getting that. So that on this end, this is now what we are going to do. Remember our NPV when we started? I need to determine the present value of our cash flows. We deduct our initial outlay. Let us jump to year one when I was generating 25 million and year two conditional of us generating 25 million. What will you be having? I'm going to start with this first branch of 12 million. So this is what I'll be having. I'll be having, of course, my 25 million here. We multiply by the interest factor year one, which is zero. 0 0.9091, okay? We are going to add 
this branch is 12 million. So 12 by the discounting factor year 2, 0 0.8264. Okay? So that as at the end of the day, having all this, we are going to less our initial outlay, which was 40 million. So that should give us our NPV of how much? That should give us our NPV of how much, my good students? Pick your calculator. We start working out 25 times 0 0.9091 plus 12 by 0 0.8264 minus 40. Mwalimu is getting here. You can confirm. I'm getting negative 7. Negative 7. 0.3557. Kindly you can confirm if you're getting the same. This branch, we go to the other branch. This branch is uh, 16 million. So I'm having 25 by 0 0.9091. We add this branch is 16 million by 0 0.8264 minus 40. 25 by 0 0.9091 plus 22 by 0 0.8264, right, minus 40. So what will you be having here? I should be talking of uh, basically 25 by 0 0.9091 plus, of course, 16 times 0 0.8264. In this case, minus 40, this should give us a figure of 4 point, I'm having negative 4.0501. Mm -hmm. The next bit here, I'm having, of course, uh, 25 times 0 0.9091. We add 22 by 0 0.8264. Minus 40 here. My good students, I'm getting 0. Point, I'm getting uh, 0. 0.9083. Kindly, you can confirm with what you are getting. Mm -hmm. So once I'm done with the first branch, we proceed to the second branch of 30 million. So what will we be having here? Now I know it will flow. So let me just uh, remove this. So this branch will give us, now we are at 30 million. Year one, we had 30 million. So I'm having 30 million here by 0 0.9091. So because all this will be the same, 30 by 0 0.9091. 30 by 0 0.9091. This is where I'm having, where year one we generated 30 million, right? Plus, now, cash flows year two, branch one, I should be having 20 million by 0 0.8264 minus 40 plus 25 by 0 0.8264 minus 40 plus 30 by 0 0.8264 minus 40 okay so what will we have my good students here this will give us how much let us check it out the first one should be 30 by 0 0.9091 plus 20 by 0 0.8264 minus 40 that should give us three point. That should give us basically three point eight zero one. That is what I'm getting. Uh, branch two thirty times zero point nine zero nine one. Okay, we add twenty five by zero point eight two six four minus forty. This should give us seven point. Nine, 
three three i believe that we are all on the same page lastly i'm having 30 by 0 0.9091 we add 30 by 0 0.8264 we less 40 less 40 that should give us 12 point zero six five so that is what molimu is getting in relation to all our npv in all our branches now the question here wanted us to do what the question here my good students if you can check clearly we were told to uh give what part two and three the best possible NPV of the project and its probability as well as the, wo the worst possible. So we start with the best possible. The best possible NPV, where are we generating the highest NPV in all these three? The event, or rather the point where I'm generating the highest NPV, if you can check clearly, is what? 12.065, right? So literally, this is what I'm going to take as the highest Literally, this one is what? This one is the highest here. Right? What is the probability, the resultant probability of that? In this case, I need to take the joint probabilities. I need to take the joint probability. So the joint probability at this point, I'll be having the 0 0.6 here because it is lying in this line or rather in this branch. So I'll be having 0 0.6. We multiply by 0 0.1. So that should give us a resultant probability of what? The probability, therefore, should be 0 0.6 times 0 0.1. 0 0.6 times 0 0.1. In this case, I'm getting 0 0.06. So we can agree and say, therefore, that this time round, our resultant probability here is 0 0.06 resultant probability of the highest NPV because you are talking of the joint probability 0 0.6 and 0 0.1 as simple as that what about the worst the worst possible NPV literally I can see the first one negative 7.3557 or you are going to say that Molimu 0 point is the, is the worst of course you can see it is negative 7 right so therefore I'm going to take negative 7 Uh-huh. This is the worst. This is the worst. What about the resultant probability? The resultant probability, I'm going to take, of course, our 0 0.4 here times the probability of that branch, which is 0 0.2. So therefore, I'm going to take 0 0.4 by 0 0.2 to give us 0 0.08. So therefore, my good students, we can agree and say, therefore, that the re resultant probability of the worst NPV is 0 0.08. So that is what you are required to do, actually, number one and number two. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Believing that is okay. Let us see the next item. The examiner wanted us to do what? The examiner here wanted us, number four, to basically work out expected NPV, expected net present value. Anytime, my good students, anytime you see expected, what should come at the back of your mind is the concept of summation of our probabilities times the payoff. And this case now, the good thing is that our payoff, we are going to take it as our NPV. That is a payoff that you are going to take. So therefore, let us do this. We need to determine we need to determine our expected NPV. Examiner wants us to determine our expected NPV. This will be simple. Molemu is saying is simple because already we have determined our NPVs here. So what we are going to do, we are going to take, we start with year one. In this case, I'm having year one where I was generating 25 million. So I'm starting with this branch. 
this branch will give us our NPV, the first NPV is negative 7.3557 times our joint probability, times our joint probability. Our joint probability is 0 0.4 times 0 0.2, which gave us 0 0.08. We add. The next NPV here is negative 4.0501 times the joint probability. Joint probability will be 0 0.4 times 0 0.3 which will give us 0 0.12, which will give us 0 0.12. So that this should give us plus the other NPV 0 0.9083 times the joint probability 0 0.4 by 0 0.5, 0 0.4 by 0 0.5, this should give us 0 0.2. So that as at the end of the day, what will you be having here? I'll be having negative 7.3557 times 0 0.008. We add negative 4.0501 times 0 0.12. We add 0 0.9083 by 0 0.2. This should give us negative 0 0.8 negative 0 0.8929 okay what about the next item here we go to the second branch the second branch i'm having 3.801 times our joint probability what will be our joint probability 0 0.6 times 0 0.4 0 0.6 times 0 0.4 this should give us 0 0.24. We add probability of, uh, or rather, uh, payoff of which is NPV 7.933 times probability joint 0 0.6 times 0 0.5. This should give us 0 0.3. Uh huh. <coughs> Excuse me, add the last one 12.065 times joint probability 0 0.06. So this should give us what? This should give us 3.801 times 0 0.24. We add 7.933 by 0 0.3. We are going to add. 12.065 by 0 0.06 so that as at the end of the day this should give us what 4.6233 so our expected npv we sum this one up so that as at the end of the day my good students we should be talking of plus minus 0 0.89 to 9 so i can clearly see that my npv here is 3.7304 expected NPV expected NPV that is what the examiner wanted us to determine that's what the examiner wanted us to to determine just like that what was the next question here the next question my good students you are told what Ah, the next question, of course, is to advise. Advise the management of Borra Manufacturers Limited on whether the processing machine should be purchased. What can we advise? Based with our knowledge of NPV, what do you think? Of course, they should purchase this machine because it has a positive expected net present value. It has a positive expected net present value. Therefore, they should proceed and purchase that machine. Literally, that is what the examiner expected you to do in this question. It is a very good question with actually majority of the concepts that we need to understand anytime you are handling decision tree. Now, let us do this. 
Let us add our own question there. To sum up the whole concept, actually, we can add our question here and clear this bit at once. What if the examiner here had asked us to compute the standard deviation of this machine? The standard deviation of the, uh, this machine. That is, of course, how will we have done it? This is what we should do. At this point, my good student, it is important that you recall the concept of standard deviation where we said that standard deviation literally, we normally tend to talk of our, uh, let me have this somewhere, standard deviation recall, we normally tend to talk of our return minus expected return we square this one times probability, summation, then we do what? Square root. This is our whole idea of standard deviation, the one that we know, right? But because I'm dealing with NPV, nothing much will change. What we'll be having is just our actual NPV minus expected NPV. Of course, this one squared times our probability then summation of that, we do what? We determine the square root. Nothing will change. Nothing much will change. This is how we can determine basically our standard deviation. Do you want Molimu also to work out this one really? Or you can do it on our own Uh-huh. Molimu wafanye kazi yake. Okay. Let us see. So, I've determined our expected NPV here, which is 3. 0.7304. That is our expected NPV that we've literally determined. Joint probability, we can redo it again because uh, no need of us writing all this again. So I want us to work it out. Mm -hmm. So in this case, I'm having our case here. That should be, of course, our actual NPV minus expected NPV. We can start with our first branch. Actual NPV is negative 7.3557. We less our expected NPV, 3.7304. We square this one. We multiply by our joint probability, which was 0 0.08. We proceed to the next item. I'm having negative 4.0501 minus expected 3.7304. We square this one times our joint probability 0 0.4 times 0 0.3. We got 0 0.12. Uh-huh. NPV 0 0.9083 minus expected 3.7304. We square times joint probability 0 0.4 times 0 0.5, which literally gave us what? 0 0.2. Then we proceed to the next item, which I'm having 3.2. 801 minus 3.7304 this one squared times joint probability 0 0.6 times 0 0.4 to give us 0 0.24 I'm having the next one is 7.9 7.933 minus of course uh 3.7304 we square times our joint probability 0 0.6 times 0 0.5 to give us 0 0.3 then lastly I'm having 12.065 minus 3.7304 you square times 
joint probability 0 0.06 so that as at the end of the day my good students determining the summation whichever answer that you're going to have you square root that will give us our standard deviation and that one Mwalimu will not do for us will not do it for us I want you guys to take that chance and work it out on your own give me the standard deviation on that so you'll find that in this case actually we are done with that question and also the concept of decision tree in regard to NPV there's a question in uh, either check either August or April 2022 there is a question for decision tree remember like uh, it was not uh, tested uh, the other day April it was not tested uh, in December so check the concept of decision tree either in August or uh, basically uh, that is April 2022 the same concept applies and that question is almost the same question as what we've done here which you are going to do that question in the next session to this point guys thank you so much let us meet in the next session whereby we are going to handle another question for decision tree which is at either august or april 2022 thank you and see you then